Hi, I'm Nathaniel, CTO and founder of Henry. Today, let's talk about how we use Hasura to rapidly scale our complex healthcare business. I'm going to share our experiences and some tips and tricks along the way. I've been working in startups for 10 years in a variety of industries. Doing this has taught me how to solve different problems at different scales. There is no one size fits all solution, but I hope you can see what we're doing today and maybe take some inspiration from it. Now, as a founder, I'm much more focused not just on making sure that we have the right code, but that that code meets our business objectives. Healthcare is incredibly important and yet one of the most poorly served areas of our lives. Just under half of Americans are either uninsured or underinsured. And even when you have good insurance, that doesn't mean you'll have simple, fast, or affordable access to the healthcare you need. Henry offers direct pay solutions to common health problems, such as weight management. No insurance is needed. Customers can save $1,000 a month or more on our programs, providing customers with the healthcare they need at prices they can afford. Collectively, our customers save millions of dollars monthly. Here, we have a quick architecture diagram showing you how Hasura fits in to our overall picture. At the top, we have our typical Postgres database. On the right, we have our business logic and external services. On the bottom, we have our front ends. On the left, we have our identity and logging solutions. In this talk, we're going to touch on each of these different areas. To begin, I wanted to show you how we use Hasura to amplify our developer productivity. This is probably the biggest and most important impact that Hasura has made for us. Even though the solutions we offer look simple on the surface, there are a lot of moving pieces under the hood. Customers, providers, pharmacies, and our own internal teams all have different needs. So you'd normally imagine that we'd have a very large engineering team to take on all these challenges? No. We started using Hasura with one and a half engineers, and today we have a single small team. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how do we provide all these different customers and all these different use cases access to the data that they need. The biggest insight we've had with Hasura is that rather than thinking, how do I build an API? We think, how do we model the data? I've been a backend engineer and we spent a lot of time figuring out how to connect routes to controllers, controllers to services, and then services to our data access level. All this work is replaced by Hasura. So much busy work that I just don't have to do anymore. That said, this does require a change of thought. Your data structure is now your API. So here are some of the most important tips and tricks we've learned. One, to really think about how your tables are structured and your naming system. Please decide upfront on a consistent naming system because your names are now not just your internal naming, but also your public API. One of, the, one of the tips we figured out with Postgres is to use schemas, which are kind of like virtual databases, to logically group tables. For example, you can create a customer schema, and in that you might have a customer table, but also a profile table, maybe a settings table. It makes it much easier to see how these tables are connected to each other. And down the line, you could move one of these schemas to a different database if you needed to. We've also started using triggers. Now I know that modern software says, don't put your business logic into the database, put it into your application code. But with Hasura, it's a little bit different. So do consider using triggers. They are very powerful, but they still can be dangerous, so you've been warned. One of the nice things about using Hasura is it has built-in migrations, not just for Hasura schema, but for our SQL. This is huge. I've worked a lot of startups where we've either had to build our own SQL migration strategies or use off-the-shelf solutions. Having it built into Hasura is just one less tool for us to manage. Small warning here, we have noticed recently that upgrades can sometimes lead to downtime. And you know, this is to be expected, especially if you're doing a large mutation on a database table. That said, we're working with Hasura support right now to understand this problem, and hopefully we can go back to doing Hasura migrations during 
live production time. But the best thing from Hasura is once you've done all this work and figured out your data structure, you get your API for free. Whether it's filtering or joining or sorting or even really advanced features like live queries, Hasura provides it all for you straight out the box. Now, how do we know it's productive? Most of the startups I've worked in, we've had roughly a one-to-one -one ratio between front-end engineers and back-end engineers. But with Hasura, we're seeing our back-end engineers being so productive, we've been able to change that ratio to two-to-one. That means for every back-end engineer that we have, they're supporting two front-end engineers. We actually freed up one of our back-end engineers to work on other back-end focused projects. And thanks to this doubling of productivity, we're shipping more features to our customers faster than ever before. But there's more to there's more than just backend. How does front end leverage this technology? Our front end team also loves loves the GraphQL API that Husura provides. There is no more waiting on the back end or having to painstakingly model out the API. They have all the control they could want fully fledged API, what they consider automagical type generation, and the ability to be as efficient and fancy as they'd like. To be clear, they still need to work closely with the backend team, but the discussions are around data model and architecture, not minor details like, I need to sort on this column, can you make sure that the backend could support that? Now, I know that all sounds great, so you're probably thinking to yourself, how do we make sure that this is scalable and cost-effective? As part of our evaluation of, of Hasura, we did an internal survey with the engineering team. This quote is from that survey. The change in focus allows you as a developer to focus on the architecture and less on boilerplate. Let's talk about some of the services that interact with Hasura and how it forces us to rethink our architecture. One of the biggest learning curves for developers is that since the API is automatically generated, you don't get to do business logic in controllers like we are used to doing. Instead, we found these three methods powerful. The first is using stored procedures or triggers. We touched on this earlier. This leverages the database functionality that's built into Postgres. This is great for small or transactional issues. An example is you want to set a created date when, when a row is created, or you're going to do some kind of complex mutation and you just need some additional logic to make sure it's valid before letting it commit. Uh, as a quick tip, we've actually used PG cron to make sure that we could do some of this logic in the database on its own schedule. Actions and remote schema. This lets you expose external REST or GraphQL endpoints as part of your Hasura deployment. For those who are familiar with GraphQL, this is just federation. One of the really cool ways we use this is for file uploads and downloads. We have a small microservice we built that returns signed Google Cloud storage links. This is federated with Hasura so that you can access it the way you'd access any other Hasura resource. What's really cool is you can join on other Hasura resources. So for example, if you have a profile table, you can join that profile table with this Google Cloud storage resource. And suddenly, you can return signed links to allow people to view profile images. This has the dual benefit of both keeping everything in the same API, but because we're using signed links, the actual files themselves are uploaded and downloaded external to Hasura, which makes it more efficient. And the last technique that I think is really easy to miss, because you're not used to thinking of it in this way, but is very powerful, is turning your actions into data. An example of this is sending email. Traditionally, as a backend engineer, if I'm asked to send an email, I'll just reach for my favorite email library. But then I almost always have the same problems. What happens if the email doesn't go out or the execution of the code breaks? How do I know like the state? How do I know it went out? Or as the project gets bigger and gets split into multiple services, where does email sending live? Does it, you know, exist in my like onboarding flow or does it exist in my main application? Ultimately, you need to send emails to multiple different places and it can get really awkward to figure out where this code should live. So what we do is we actually create an email table. And in this table, we might have some fields like to, subject, body, the usual email fields. We also have a sent at field. 
Then we build a small worker service. This worker service pulls the table for any unsent emails and then sends them automatically. This allows each service to be the master of its own domain and takes advantage of service domain. And it also allows us to be fault tolerant, scalable, and efficient. If for whatever reason that email service goes down, the very next time it polls, it will be able to catch up and do anything that is missed. You also have a nice database table that will show you when everything got sent, makes it much easier to diagnose and debug problems. One of the bonus things we've learned is that you can tie store procedures with this. So for example, you could have a customer table and when, that cus when a customer is added to that customer table, you could use a trigger to write a welcome email to the email table. It's very simple, transactional, and really elegant when you get used to it. Since Asura does so much heavy lifting for us, we can avoid the usual monolith that startups typically build. However, we still need a platform for logic that needs to run separately. For example, complex logic or logic that talks to Excel services. We wanted to pick a single platform that would scale as far as possible and really complement Asura. For us, that platform was Cloud Run. It has all the advantages of serverless, but lets you run full Docker containers. You can even run complex, multi-threaded code and scale up to 100 instances. One of the downsides of serverless is that you don't have a long-running instance. For example, that email service worker we talked about earlier. It needs to be constantly checking for new emails and making sure they get sent. Normally, I would model this as a, just a 24 seven little service running on a compute instance. But then what happens if that compute instance goes down or what happens when you send more emails? It gets a kind of tricky problem. Instead, what we do is we've made that service uh, a cloud run instance. And then we use cloud scheduler to send regular cron style events. So every minute or so we send an event basically telling it to check for more emails to send and if so, send them. This lets us simulate the effects of a single 24 hour service, but with the scaling of fault tolerance of serverless. We're also playing with some advanced ideas. For example, in cloud run versions are free and when you don't use them, they can scale to zero. So they don't cost you anything. So right now we're experimenting with doing per feature branch deployments in dev for our front end. That means that every single feature branch for our front end has its own URL and its own living deployment that's live right now in our dev environment. That makes testing and sharing builds between a team member so much easier. It's important to note that even though this looks like a very complicated and sophisticated deployment, the architecture itself is very cost effective. We don't need any dedicated DevOps staff and our serverless cost per customer is less than pennies per month. Now, as everyone knows, healthcare involves some customers most sensitive data. And this is a heavily regulated space. That means we need to be thinking about security and auditing from the start of any project. We're going to start by thinking by talking about how Versura works with our authentication systems. Now, here's a confession. On every project I bid on, authentication has always taken longer to implement than I'd like. There are some great companies out there that provide out of the box solutions. But as soon as you mention HIPAA, prices can go up 10 times, 20 times or more. So for us, we settled on Google Cloud Identity with some minor customization. We hope this is able to save you a lot of time in your own projects. So this is pretty easy. Step one, set up Google Cloud Identity. That makes sense. Step two, build a little microservice to sit in front of Google Cloud Identity. This microservice can do things like generate JWTs, and also provide some customization options, like being able to send your own custom emails rather than using Identity's particular way of doing it. When you generate these JWTs, don't forget to set useful session variables like user email or user ID. You will be able to use these session variables later on in Hasura. And then step three, like any JWT implementation, your client simply passes your token to Hasura to authenticate on every single request. I've really enjoyed using authorization with Hasura. It's built in, it's powerful, and it's free. My advice is to play with it. It can't do absolutely everything, but if you learn its strengths and weaknesses, you'll figure out what works best for you. Now in Hasura, each role you set up does require some configuration. So it's important to find the right balance between control and speed for you. For us, 
we have some basic user roles, maybe a provider role, customer service role, maybe even an end user role. And then we have some feature level roles for specific granular functionality. These are roles that are really just around one small specific piece of functionality that we want to control. This is a nice balance for us. Hasura also provides row level control. This is powerful and we use it, for example, to show a user only his profile and not anyone else's. The session context we talked about earlier can be used here, which opens up a lot of possibilities. Authentication and authorization are only half the story. We also need to log every action taken. Hasura has two main approaches to logging. The first is to use database triggers to write audit logs on every mutation. This is very powerful and Hasura help, helpfully includes both the useful context, for example, session variables that we discussed earlier, and some example codes on how to get set up. However, this doesn't work for read queries or data sources that don't support triggers. The second approach is to use the logs that Hasura generates itself. These logs cover both read and write actions, but aren't accessible from the database. Instead, we use the data.doc sync to get the logs and forward them to Google Cloud Storage for long-term persistence. Maybe in the future, Hasura will allow us to log directly to a database, for example, a Postgres or ideally a BigQuery-like solution. This would be really helpful, and I hope is released in the future. That said, this is still pretty easy to set up in practice. It's also worth noting that in our architecture, you'll see that many services go directly to Hasura rather than the database. Having Hasura centralize all data access means that we have a central hub for auditing. In conclusion, we have covered how Henry uses Hasura to improve the developer productivity, build scalable architectures, and handle security. In a fast growing telehealth startup, I hope our experience and tips and tricks help you build your solution even faster. Every month, Henry saves customers millions of dollars and provides the care they need. If you would like to join our adventure and make a direct daily impact in one of the fastest growing startups in the country, please come apply at careers.henrymeds.com. We're hiring multiple roles and are excited to talk to you. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.